Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna be talking about Morgan Aced and whether or not he was robbed at Portugal Pro. A lot of people in the comment section are saying that he was robbed, that he deserved to be placed higher. He was 6th at this show and he brought his absolute best ever. He's always conditioned, he's always shredded, this guy. And he's always the biggest because he's the tallest. But this time around he actually brought a solid level of uh, fullness and also he controlled his midsection quite nicely. Uh, his legs were fuller and rounder. Look at the glutes, I mean this guy was peeled. Definitely the hardest glutes in the show and also his back was probably the best back in this show. Look at his back. Look at the Christmas tree and overall the thickness of this back, especially the traps. He has really massive traps. So all this in combination with crazy conditioning improved fullness and roundness and also controlled midsection. This is the first time I saw him actually pay attention to controlling his midsection. He obviously worked very hard on bringing this package to this show and it paid off. This is his best ever, I have to say, but maybe the result wasn't as good as he hoped it would be. Take a look at him in the lineup, unfortunately the guy that was uh, streaming this on YouTube uh, covered uh, a little bit of his body, but you can still see, you can still see his back right here. And back lat spread is a better back pose for him than back double bicep, but still he looks good. So in my opinion, here he's beating Tim Budesheim, I think he's beating even Petr Klancher, and you could make an argument that he's beating Andrea Muzi and Vlad Suhurutsko as well. I wouldn't say that he's beating the winner Andrea Presti, but he is looking very good for sure. Now he's gonna hit the back lat spread, and now guys pay attention when he's in transition, look at the Christmas tree, and now when he spreads those lats, he looks really impressive. Look at the thickness of those lats and this back, just he's killing it. He's definitely at his absolute best ever. I honestly didn't expect that he's gonna improve much. He's a former strongman. I thought that he was doing this bodybuilding thing just, you know, for the hell of it. I didn't expect him to improve this much and to look this good. And honestly, I gotta say he's killing these two guys. And maybe he was robbed, in fact. Now take a look at him from the side. Also very good. I mean, he looks really good from the sides. He's showing his thickness. And here you can see, like, he is definitely the biggest in this lineup. Not just because he's tall, but he has a ton of muscle. And here is what I dislike about his physique, it's his quads, his legs from the front and his midsection, which he improved tremendously. It's definitely much better than it ever was before, but it's still his weakness. So basically, if you consider how much he improved, what conditioning he brought, and that he was probably the biggest guy in the lineup, you could make an argument that he was robbed, that he could have placed higher, but here is the thing guys, he is so tall that he is so much different from everybody else, in this show, in other shows, and the winner kind of determines the criteria. For example, Mr. Olympia, if Big Remy didn't win the Mr. Olympia, if Brandon actually won, second place would probably not be Remy. Second would probably be Hari, because his physique looks more like Brandon's. And if Brandon is the champion, that's obviously the criteria for the Mr. Olympia winner. So if Morgan won this show or he placed second, that would mean that they are looking for something that Morgan has. And who else has this? Nobody. So it's really hard for him to find a place in these lineups where everybody is much shorter than him. But you know, what he can do is he can come as good as he can and he came at his best ever, he did great, he looked amazing, 6 spot, not a bad result, but if you guys think he deserved more, tell me in the comment section down below. If you guys want to support my channel, you can try one of the Old School Labs supplements, you can click in the link in the description of this video, it will lead you to the Old School Labs website, and here is what I recommend, uh, Vintage Blast. It is the best pre-workout that I ever tried, it has so many great flavors, it's not super loaded with stimulants, but it's gonna give you a lot of energy, a lot of focus, your pump is gonna feel amazing, so I definitely suggest this product to you, and if you want a 12% discount, just use the code EVAN, thank you guys. Alright, next we have a physique update of Hunter Labrada, who looks absolutely shredded for 150 days, basically, out of Mr. Olympia. So there is still a lot of time for him to get shredded, to get ready for the stage, but he looks, I don't know, 4 weeks out, so he stays very, very lean. And you know, he looks great for the guest posings, for these uh, Instagram photos and videos, but did he really improve? 
I don't know, we're gonna see that on stage, but now take a look at his back, for example, which was a weakness for him, and he really tried to improve this back, but, like, his insertions, his last insertions are not really that low, not really that great, so it's gonna be tough for him to improve the back, but did his back grow? Did he add more thickness to it? Did he add a density? Well, I don't really see some crazy insane changes, maybe he improved it a little, we still have to wait to see on the Mr. Olympia when he's completely shredded, but, you know, he's he's really lean in the offseason, so he's definitely not in a large caloric surplus, but really it makes sense, I mean, first of all, this guy, somebody this big, it's really hard for him to be in a surplus where he's actually gonna gain some fat, it, it's tough. Some people can do it, like Nick Walker, for example, he, he's doing his offseason properly, but Hunter, I don't know, he's too lean, if you ask me, but, you know, again, I get it, it's really tough for him to eat that much to actually gain body fat. The other thing is, he doesn't want to grow too much, he wants to improve certain body parts, not to grow, but is that really possible? I mean, listen to Ian Valier, and he needs to improve his back and his chest, and that's why he's eating like a maniac. He was over 300 pounds in the offseason, and he has to do that. He's still eating like an absolute maniac, even though he's really heavy. Like, he is 260, over 260 on stage, which is really, really big, but he still needs an excess of calories in order to actually grow, but not grow everywhere. He needs to grow in certain body parts, and is that really possible? Can you really grow? Can you improve a body part like Hunter needs to improve his back if you're not in a big caloric surplus? It's really tough to make any kind of changes when you are at this level, when you are fourth at the Mr. Olympia, you know, it's really tough, he's very, very high level, and he needs to push his body to the limits just to maintain, to stay where he is, and when he wants to progress, he needs to go beyond the limits. Now, he looks really massive here, really good, but does he look, you know, as freaky as Nick Walker, for example, in the offseason? No, not really, he doesn't seem that big, he does seem very complete, but look at Nick in the offseason, he looks so much freakier, you know, his nickname is Mutant, and he looks like a freaking mutant, I mean, he looks insane, he looks ridiculous, Hunter, he doesn't look like this. But at the Olympia, Hunter beats Nick. Why is that? Is that because Hunter has prettier shape, better aesthetics? He does have that. He does have prettier shape, smaller waist, better lines. That is true. But is he really that smaller than Nick? Nope. This is the answer. Absolutely not. Hunter in the offseason right now, he's around 286, as he said in his previous uh, physique update. Uh, Nick is 292, so that's a minor difference, that's like 6 pounds, and Hunter is even leaner. Nick is also very lean, I can't say that he's not lean, but Hunter is basically shredded. So Hunter is possibly bigger than Nick. Here in this photo, he looks bigger, but he's out angling Nick a little, as you can see, uh, based on the floor, he's more, he's closer to the camera. So let's say that they are similar size. So now we go back to the question, why Nick looks bigger in the offseason than Hunter, unless they're standing one next to another, and I have the answer. Well, here is Petr Kluncher, and everybody thought that this guy is going to be bigger than everybody on the stage. He looks basically bigger than Big Ramy, right? He looks really big in his Instagram photos. But on the stage, he doesn't really look that massive. He has great shape and all, but he's not really that much bigger than everybody else, even though he does seem like that on his Instagram shots. Why is that? It's because of the size of his head. Yeah, as silly, as funny as it sounds, it's true proportionally, his head is much smaller than the rest of his body. And it is the opposite with Hunter. Hunter's head is bigger, proportionally, than the rest of his body. Take a look at it here. So you can definitely see it. His head is enormous. I'm not saying that his head is bloated because he's in the off-season. It gets big when he's bloated and fat. No, it's just the, the, the size of his skull. His skeletal structure is like that. His head is really big. And just like it won't help Petr Kluncher on stage that his head is small, it's not gonna hurt Hunter on stage that his head is big. This is only talking about his Instagram photos and videos, the updates, why he doesn't seem as freaky as Nick Walker, for example, and some of the other guys. It's simply because of the size of his head.
So even though he may not seem as massive, he's actually really big and he's really complete and has amazing lines. And I think he actually has the potential to become the Mr. Olympia winner one day. What do you guys think? Anton Wyant got really freaking shredded. He may be downsized a little, but the shape of this guy, he looks phenomenal. I'm gonna show you a couple of physique updates. Anyways, he posted this and he is not saying anything about competing. He never announced that he's gonna be doing Vancouver Pro. How do we know that and why we are talking about this? Well, he's from Canada and Ian Valier also said that even though he didn't say anything that he thinks that Anton is getting ready for Vancouver Pro. Anyways, here he says a screenshot from this morning's check uh, in with coach. Uh, he says lowest weight in years and he says calories were at their lowest yesterday at 2860. My meals were kid size, it's comical. But you know, 3000 calories is not really that low. I know bodybuilders bigger than him that went like uh, 1500 calories uh, in the final weeks before the show. So he's still eating quite a bit and he got shredded all the same. Take a look at this physique update, the video was posted by his coach, uh, Dorian Hamilton. Look at the freaking calves and look at the caption. The caption was very suspicious to me. What Dorian Hamilton, his coach, says, almost ready for the bitch, right? He would be getting this shredded just, you know, for the bitch, meaning for his uh, social media, for his YouTube channel, for the content of his social media, which I don't think he would do this. I don't think, especially with his heart issues, I don't think he would push his body this much. He's not just lean. Yeah, he downsized, but he's still very hard. And I mean, also pretty muscular that I doubt that he's not uh, doing any hardening agents, you know, the toxic gear that the bodybuilders use in their final stages of their preps. I'm pretty sure he's doing that because he does look very shredded, very hard, and he looks amazing. I mean, those calves are really freaking impressive. But what is probably the most impressive on his physique are his quads. And you can't say that he's not complete. He does have weaknesses, but he's also very complete. And it is interesting that he's doing these check-ins in posing trunks. Why would he be doing them in posing trunks? Why would he be sending these kind of photos to his coach unless he was actually prepping for the show? And why would his glutes be this shredded and his hamstrings and his lower back? So he is definitely in contest shape. He can compete if he wants to. He didn't announce anything, but if he wants to jump in Vancouver Pro, he definitely can do that. He's definitely that good. And Vancouver Pro is this week this upcoming weekend and can Antoine win this show while well, Ian Valier is coming so probably not but still a very strong second he can do that and you know maybe he can give Ian a run for his money and I would love to see that it would make this show exciting so far Ian has no competition but if Antoine does it it's gonna be much more fun and guys do not forget that Antoine won California Pro only two years ago in 2020 so he's a serious bodybuilder he won a pro show two years ago and he's an Olympian so having two Olympians in that show is definitely gonna make things more interesting I really hope that Anton is gonna do it and he does look amazing right now do you guys remember this guy Brad Wilkin after he parted ways with Fuad nobody has been talking about him but as you can see he has been working in silence he did a guest posing and he looks amazing he is definitely growing and I'm sure next time he hits the stage he's going to look amazing I mean he did an Arnold Classic this year and he didn't look that good he wasn't at his best he was better in Chicago a year before even though he did make changes he just didn't peak properly but he also realized that he can't really be that competitive against the best of the best against the top pros so he decided to take some time off to not compete anymore and to try to make more progress and as you can see he's doing that he's definitely making progress he looks huge in this guest posing and his conditioning is also very good he looks great brett wilkin anyways guys that's gonna do it for this video if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up and for more videos like this subscribe to my channel guys and also don't forget to check out the old school labs if you want to support my channel anyways guys once again thank you so much for watching all the best and bye bye